a special thanks to our colleagues at SID for figuring out how to record the breakouts because we all know that's where the richest conversation happens. Um, but we also know from research, as I was mentioning in my group uh, with Ingrid, that um, we all learn better if we create a pause, reflect, synthesize, and share moment. So we're doing our own lessons learned exercise. So I don't know who would like to go first amongst, um, across Ingrid, Barbara, or Zachary's group, but hopefully someone, and actually we need to keep it to like three minutes, if we can be pithy, that would be great. I don't know, but who wants to go first? Maybe um, Zachary, someone from whoever the person is reading out from your group could go first. I could put that um, person in the spot. Hi. Roxanne was kind enough yeah. to volunteer, so I'll get to <laughs> sort her. of. Thank you, Roxanne. <laughs> yeah, you go for it. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Since we have limited time, um, we talked about the challenges and um, also how do you make this happen. Um, and I think instead of the challenges, which I think all of us have experienced, how do you go beyond lessons learned um, to make that apply to other or allow that to be available to other project teams? Um, and even using the same team across projects um, and how do you apply contextual and other activity specific lessons to a, a broader context. So there are a number of challenges. I'm sure you spoke about some of those as well. So I thought we had a great rich discussion having to do with so what, so how, how, do, how, do, how does this happen? What do we do? And what are some of the essential elements in um, making this successful so that learning lessons can be learned beyond just a specific project? Um, one, of the, um, one of the ideas, which is one that has come up before, but we have to emphasize that it does require people and interaction with people, is communities of practice. Um, and another is um, thinking about the how-to in terms of adaptive management. It's not just saying you have to do adaptive management, but actually there were some examples about specifically some of the steps that are needed in order to get there. Um, I thought another great example from the group was the pivot project where when we talk about um, sustainability and how to make this happen in a continuous way, um, the way to do that or one of the major factors I got out of it was that the stakeholders all had a great commitment. There are a variety of different stakeholders in terms of private sector employment and, um, and each of those gained some benefit um, in order to participate. So they had a literally had a stake in the process. And that was one of the ways that there's a continuous improvement. And I found that in my projects as well. Um, one of the other things that we brought to one another's attention was the idea of faces and cases. A lot of times we talk about lessons learned, a hundred page report, whatever it is, um, or maybe even throwing it up on a website and having lots of people um, have different ideas and tools there. But really we need to use faces and cases, specific examples. How did it work? Um, who put it to use and what were some of the factors um, in doing so? Um, so that's one of the ways to make lessons learned more useful is to do it with examples and with people. Um, the, lead, the learning agenda, that was um, an interesting discussion as well, that in terms of um, how to make some of this happen is to establish a learning agenda, either within the organization um, for further implementation or gathering groups together to develop a learning agenda around the same themes to actually um, how you create this. So there would be a how-to kind of situation where you create and also track. And I think um, Zachary in particular has found um, some projects that that has been extremely helpful. Um, multiple times um, it came up in the group in terms of executive buy-in um, that there's some organizations that have it and others do not. And executive buy-in in terms of the amount of it does um, take resources to translate lessons learned into actual project activities and um, executive buy-in is important. So Great. the last, just one last thing, which is collaborative learning groups. Um, and that's something Lexine brought up and um, that they have together in the work that they've done developed these collaborative learning groups They've developed a theory of change and also they provide for exchange of ideas um, so that the tacit knowledge that's required to, to take these lessons and apply those, that those have been helpful. And I'm sure she could tell us more about that as well. That's it. Yeah. yeah. 
thank you so much, Roxanne, and to the group. It sounds like it really was a rich discussion. I know it's hard to be the one to try to summarize all the nuance. Yeah, but well done. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's reminding me of some of the conversations our group had. Uh, so I'll turn it to whoever was in Barbara's group that was going to do the quick report back. Michael, Hello, I'll be super quick. Um, thank you again, Barbara, Emily, everybody who was in the group. It was a very uh, rich discussion. Um, and um, in many ways, it was um, kicked off by Barbara sharing that there was a project, um, two countries, one Georgia, one Philippines, both working um, in a similar sector at different stages of maturity of the project. And um, that somebody elsewhere in the institution had uh, kind of said, hey, have you thought that these two are connected and, and kind of prompted an exploration that is about to be facilitated? And so one of the challenges that Barbara was looking at is how to nurture that conversation between these two potential uh, maybe similar projects, maybe different. Um, and um, <clears throat> some of the, um, uh, for example, suggestions that came from Emily, who has been doing work on um, uh, failure analysis, you could say, across care. Um, not that they fail, but she's been analyzing to see if they do. <laughs> so, uh, and still identifying uh, lessons learned. That's not the best way to characterize it. Emily, please forgive me. Um, is, um, you know, that she, she was in fact, because the way this came up, by the way, is that we all find that the reporting process is really about celebrating success, right? That we're really not um, invited to kind of put out the messy. And so how to, how to cult, you know, how to um, create space for, for the, the realism to be um, present and learned from. And so Emily shared that not only does she do an analysis that she kind of identifies some, uh, some likely targets that she then debriefs the community uh, of, with, she also uses questions as a technique for um, prompting people to, to explore. Well, what do you think? How did it go for you? Blah, 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 blah. So that was very um, uh, helpful. Um, part of our philosophical debate was um, whether or not, for example, <clears throat> the question of how do we capture? There's this idea, and I'll, I'll use the metaphor of, um, of search engines. <clears throat> there was a time when search engines were in the business of replicating card catalogs. They needed to capture the summary of what the document or the whatever was and write it up so it could be extracted and Google came along and kicked everybody's behind by not get, by getting out of the card catalog business and getting into how are people linking their papers to each other, who's citing what, and, and looking for significance in different ways. And so it's like, how might we um, need to rethink how it is that we're doing, you know, um, our card cataloging in a sense to, to see and discover new ways of, um, of, of interacting when, when things don't follow the categories of the card catalog. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, did I miss anything? I, I kind of didn't do justice to the richness of the conversation. It's, we don't really expect you to. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, I mean, you can't, right? But it is, just gives us all just a little bit of teaser in terms yep. of what you all talked about. And as we um, share back with the group, what the synthesis of what's come out of this conversation, it'll make, maybe make a little bit more sense. But I love the card catalog versus kind of systems connections analogy. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I, I, I gave Peter the disservice of going last, he was in my group, but I have great confidence he can hit the mark in terms of time and a quick read back on, on what Ingrid's group discussed. Sure, no, happy to do what I can. Um, yeah, Ingrid is, was uh, shared her example of being up against having a learning agenda sort of in place and established and helping roll that out across, I think it was 13 uh, different individual country projects. Um, we what briefly tried to identify where to engage and started off focused on identification and collection and really, I think, covered the sort of human aspect of a lot of what was going on and we found the people perspective was very important for us trying to build buy-in how do you actually get engagement and who's involved um, because I, I think the experience at least this group was responding like this I don't know if it really tracks with Ingrid's experience but the we felt for the people having a learning agenda foisted off on them um, poor choice of words perhaps but you know there's a how do you get buy-in was was a big concern for us um, what's the motivation to document something on behalf of someone else? Uh, are we actually, you know, what's even our own motivation to document lessons learned? 
Um, we touched on that. We got into a little bit of tools for engaging people, um, after action reviews, for instance, um, and uh, Triz uh, came up as an idea around how to sort of show how you could ensure something wouldn't work as a way to get you back to thinking how to be productive and constructive. Um, very much an interest in trade-offs between the products that are kind of the natural artifacts that come out and the actual sort of people and the processes and the social nature of learning. Um, that was something that we really wanted to address, um, thinking that learning agendas are not, they, they are often constructed in a linear fashion as sort of task-based, thou shalt accomplish a deliverable. But um, learning is social and non-linear and uh, ad hoc at times, and that's a good thing. Um, how do you build that in and create that local ownership? Um, sometimes it can feel a bit frozen and stilted. You know, how do you actually build in some agility? We talked about a bit of that. Um, and then came kind of full circle back to this need to embed this sort of interest in learning and learning culture within all the individuals involved in something to create a little more permanence around the behaviors as well as the actual sort of lessons that you may be formally documenting. So you've kind of built up the muscle memory and resilience around learning so people will continue to engage. Um, that's it, real high level. No, that's perfect actually, I'm right on time. Thank you, Peter. There we go. And thank you to Ingrid and to Barbara and to Zachary for leading the discussions. So I think just to say on behalf of Emily and myself, thank you all for being here, for your engagement. I found the conversations really interesting. And as importantly, to Peter's point, um, it's both the product and the people. So it was really great to get to engage with all of you. I wanna give Catherine from Sid the last word, just in terms of an ask to all of you. Um, but again, thank you so much. And we will see you at the next working group meeting, whenever that may be. We'll be looking for ideas. I should say that too. We're always looking for ideas. So if you have ideas about what that should be, let us know. Catherine? Thank you. Thank you, Lane. And thank you, Emily. And thank you, everybody, so much. And yeah, I just want to make sure everybody saw that Thomas on our team posted a link to a survey in the chat. It's really short. It really helps us. We hope you'll take it and stay safe, stay well, and we hope to see you again soon at another SIT event. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. See you next time. <laughs>